Okay, today I'm back on doing videos about simple changes, and today it's about your body. I've done a couple videos over the year on diet and stuff, and I'll try to remember to link my one, um, I think it was Finding Your Happy Weight. Uh, I'll link that video below if you're interested in watching it. But today we're on simple changes and it's your body. One of the things I've been trying to do is to eat better. I've done a lot better with my water, and um, I'm also trying to eat um, better. I don't think I eat terrible, but I don't think I eat good, okay? not I'm not super healthy with my choices all the time. I do love potato chips and all things potato. I've told you that, and that's kind of my downfall. Well, after I went to Paris for the first time, I got home, and I was just walking around like a deer in the headlights because I couldn't believe I was here and not there. And it was very depressing, so the only way I could deal with this feeling of I've got to go back to Paris is try to bring Paris into my home as much as I possibly could. I brought, bought fresh flowers. I got all brand new sheets and uh, towels and we listened to music and I lit candles and I did these things I continue to do to this day. And it's been about five or six years since our first trip. Well, one of the things that um, I loved to do when I was in Paris is observe. I observed everything. One of the things I observed was the French women and the way they ate, the way they walked, the way they dressed, everything about them. I totally, I mean, I practically stared at them when I was in restaurants because I wanted to figure out why are you so thin and why do you eat this full fat food when all of us in America are eating this fat free crap and we're still hungry and we're not satisfied and we're still gaining weight. The fat free thing is not working in case you haven't noticed. Um, we're still all fat here. But anyway, I would watch them and I would, I, I just couldn't figure out the secret to it. Well then we had a French girl come and stay with us the following summer for three and a half weeks. It was sort of a foreign exchange thing. And one of the things I noticed, she was 14, my daughter's age. One of the things I noticed about her is, A, she ate like a bird, which I used to do when I was a teenager. I ate like a bird. People would say, you eat like a bird. You're too skinny. Eat more. Eat more. Clear your plate, you know. No, I was eating fine. I was full. And, um... She ate so, such a little bit amount of food. It was shocking. I mean, and she was a normal weight. She wasn't thin. She was a good, very healthy weight. I mean, she was thin, but she wasn't skinny, okay? I guess that's how you'd say it. And um, she, I, I was just fascinated by that. And the other thing that fascinated me, she never drank a Coke. She had water the entire time, no matter what restaurant we were in or where we were, she ordered water. The other thing I noticed about her is she never snacked, okay? My kids, would, it was summertime, so my daughter would have a snack in the morning, and my daughter would have a snack in the afternoon, and my daughter would have a snack after dinner. This girl never had a snack. Never, 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 never. We went to the movies. She did not have a Coke. She did not have popcorn. She did not have candy. She wanted nothing. We were offering. I mean, she probably thought we were weird. Don't you want this? How about some snow caps? Don't you want some Twizzlers? You know, and um, no, she didn't want it. She didn't want any of it. So that fascinated me, the non-snacking thing. And the other thing is every time I went to Paris, I would eat like a king. And every time I got home, I had lost three or four pounds. And I was not trying to lose weight. Now, granted, I was walking more, but I was not walking at some exercise pace. No way. I was, um, I was going to say sauntering. What's the word? Strolling. I was strolling through Paris. We never walked with any kind of purpose. We just strolled because it was just, uh, you, if you walk too fast, you would miss something because there's something everywhere you are to see. Well, okay. The French girl came, Clara, and I learned a lot from her. Well, then I found, I, I, I don't know where I heard about, but I had this book, French Women Don't Get Fat. I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, this is a library copy because I can't find mine. Um, and I wanted to do this thing I'm going to tell you about again after I started Simple Changes because I was gotten myself again addicted to pay potato chips and salty uh, crackers and snacky things like that. Addicted. Some people are addicted to sugar. I'm addicted to salt. Okay. So uh, anyway, way back when I got this book, I read it cover to cover. It is absolutely fascinating. I highly recommend you buy it or get it at your local library. Um, French women don't get fat. Okay, why not? Let's read the book. 
Um, and all I'm going to share with you today is her story in the beginning. And I don't remember it exactly. It's been years. But the woman that writes this book, she's French. She lives in New York now. She works for some big champagne company, of course. You know, how elegant is that? But she tells a story about when she was in, I think it was high school, she came to America and spent a summer with a family in Boston. And while she was there, she gained a lot of weight. She had never been heavy as a little French girl, and she didn't live in Paris. She lived in the country somewhere. She had never been heavy. She had never gained weight in her life. Well, she talked about the cookies, the brownies, the big chocolate chip cookies at the mall, the fast food, and she gained weight. And when she got off the airplane or the boat, I don't remember which, when she got back home, her parents just stood there in shock. And the first thing out of her dad's mouth, who she promises was a loving, kind father, the immediate thing that came out of his mouth was, you look like a sack of potatoes. And she said that did not sound any better in French than it would have in English. And it hurt her feelings horribly because she knew she had gained weight. So much that the mother in Boston of the family she was staying with had to make her a couple of what she calls shift dresses because her clothes didn't fit. So she gets home. She's back in France. And her mother is like, oh, my gosh, we've got to do something. But they did it in a very kind way. Her mother calls the local doctor in town to the house, and his nickname was Dr. Miracle. And he had the girl that had gained weight, the woman in the book, he had her go through a, um, a few steps to figure out why she had gained so much weight. The first thing he did was he had her write down absolutely everything she put in her mouth for, I don't remember how long, three weeks, a month, I don't remember, get the book and read it. Um, and he would go through, when, after she did this for a time, just eat whatever you want, and then um, we will look at the, the, the papers and see what he called, he was looking for offenders, things in her diet that she was eating a lot of or too often or something that he felt like was probably causing her to gain weight. One of those for her had become pastries, and she was eating a lot of French pastries um, a lot more than she used to. And she said she was doing it for those weeks, kind of on the sly, because she knew her family, if they saw her doing that, they would not approve. Okay, the other thing she did, he did, was once he looked and he found the offenders, and he told her, if you want this pastry, that's fine, but have it once a week. Okay, he kind of talked to her like that. And I'm not giving it to you verbatim. But the next thing he did was he had her, for the weekend, drink or eat magical leek soup. The recipe is in the book. And you can also find the recipe online if you just Google it. But I don't want you to do this if you have any kind of health issues. And I'm not telling you to do this. What I want you to do before, if you want to try this, is read the book or at least go on the website and read all about it. I think it's FrenchWomenDon'tGetFat.com. But all you have to do is in Google put Miracle Leek Soup. And her website will pop up. And you'll see the little logo of her like this. And her name is, I can't pronounce it in French, but it's like Muriel Guliano. I mean, something like that. Okay, Magical Leek Soup. I just did this three weeks ago. I've done it once or twice a year for the past three years. It makes such a huge difference. What you do is you make this soup, and all it is is leeks, which are a type of onion that I had never used in my life. She tells you exactly how to do it, but you clean them, you chop them up, and you boil them. And what you get is a broth. And it's nothing but onion water, really, <laughs> if you really think about it. And that is all you have for a day and a half. And this is, she calls this recasting. It's a day and a half of the Magical Leek Soup. All right. I will tell you right now that I cheated each day. I had coffee before I started my leek soup drinking because I didn't want to get a headache from not having caffeine because I knew that would make me um, eat. If I got a headache, I would want to eat. Um, the soup is not great. Um, the other cheat I do is I put a lot of pepper in it, a little bit of salt, and some other like weird spices like parsley or something because I just needed it to have more flavor than it does naturally. And all you do is you do this on a day when you're not going to be doing anything. A lot of people do it on Saturday and Sundays because they... Um, work. 
Um, you do it and you just, whenever you're hungry, you sip a cup of this soup. I would get mine really hot and enjoy it like it was hot tea. And I think the second day I actually had tea in the morning instead of coffee. And then the second day you do the same thing until the evening and then you have a small four ounce piece. It's like the size of a deck of cards. A small four ounce piece of chicken or fish, some steamed vegetables, and a piece of fruit. So you have a meal the next night. So it's not that bad and it's not that long. But again, if you have any kind of health issues, don't do this. Or if you're pregnant or anything like that. But if you're just a normal person, you can try this. Now, what does it do and why would you do this? It sounds crazy, right? Well, for me, each time I've done it, once or twice a year, I, I, I think about it when I've totally gotten myself off track, when I'm totally back into eating potato chips all the time and french fries and stuff like that, all things potato, when I'm all back into eating crackers all the time, I realize I've gotten myself back into this carb thing. I think that stuff is carbohydrates. Um, I don't eat a lot of sweets, but those things are the downfall of me. And I did this a couple of weeks ago, and what it does, it's like it just flips a switch. I call it rebooting. It just flips a switch in your mind. Number one, you've lost a couple pounds by the time it's over. If you weigh before and after, you've lost a couple pounds, and you're going to say, well, that's just water weight. Well, you know, that might be true, but those couple pounds for me stay off for a good three or four months. They do stay off. And probably because you've worked so hard for a day and a half just drinking this soup that you don't want to blow it when you see that you've lost three or four pounds. You don't want to blow that. You want to hang on to it. Plus, it has rebooted your thinking about, or somehow it just changes the way you look at that junk food. You don't, I don't desire potato chips. I don't desire going to a fast food restaurant. All that stuff, I just... I don't know what it does, but it is called magical, but it just flips, and you just don't want that stuff for a while. I think it's a great thing. I don't know who came up with it. It's been around French circles for many, many years, she says. She also talks in the book about getting more exercise, but she says French women don't exercise like we do, um, but they do walk, and I don't live in a place where I can walk. In my daily life to get things done, I don't walk. Everything is way too far away, but I can walk around my neighborhood. But she also talks about simple things like adding movement to your life. Um, if you're at a place that has stairs and an escalator, take the stairs. If you're at the airport and there's a moving sidewalk, walk in the middle. If you are at a parking lot and you found, find yourself circling, circling, circling so that you don't have to walk 20 extra steps, park at the back of that parking lot and walk in. It's just those kinds of things that give extra movement to your life without, you know, breaking a sweat, like I say. So anyway, I really recommend this. I really like it. It sounds crazy. Um, if you feel like it, give it a shot, but definitely read the book first. The book is full of interesting topics and interesting things about French women and why they are thin and what they do and, and how they balance eating creme brulee you know do they have that every night heavens no but if they want a creme brulee they're going to eat one okay and it's so much more of a fun way to look at life of just eat what you want but just don't do it every single day okay that's it for today i hope you enjoy this video um check back and um i'll be making more talk to you later Bye bye